Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at all secrets hidden away in Rabbit Night, as well as explaining the game's mysterious storyline too. This retro-themed 2D platformer sets up the story for Andy's Apple Farm Chapter 2 by introducing new plot points and revealing a brand new character, sure to be key to the narrative going forward. So sit back, relax, and let's begin by first unlocking each and every secret found throughout this prequel tale. This is Rabbit Knight and its secrets explained. The first secret is located in the cave near the beginning of Stage 1-1. To access it, we must use the Sword Bounce ability to hop on top of these hanging mushrooms and then glitch out of a map at which point Rory breaks into a mass of pixels representing Andy and another mysterious character. We then hear a news report talking about the fire and aftermath at the Eastwood residence. I hope you all at home are having a fabulous Christmas. However, last night, Christmas Eve wasn't so great for a family on the outskirts of Pumpkin County. The 7 West Avenue Road property caught fire around 1 a.m. Friday morning. The cause of the fire is still unknown. However, the Pumpkin County Sheriff's Department states that the reason may have been a fallen Christmas tree too close to an open fireplace. There are suspected of having been two casualties. However, no bodies have been found as of yet. A 13-year-old girl was the only person found at the scene after waving down a family in their car for help. Police arrived on the scene shortly after. This is right next to the lake where a 10-year-old boy from the same family was presumed dead at Lake, Ke lake Keystone just at Lake Key two months ago. <laughs> Secret 2 is located on stage 1-1, but a little further in. We come to a pitfall where these ledges crumble beneath Rory's feet. Avoid falling onto the many mushrooms residing within this pit, and move to the left of the screen for an out-of-bounds secret. This time an interview between a police officer and Isabella, after she witnessed Arthur's murder at the hands of her father Thomas. Can you tell us what happened on Christmas Eve last year? Isabella, you can talk to me. I know it's hard, but if we're going to solve this case, we will we'll need your help. The cameras. The cameras? Yeah, me and Mama used to set up cameras in the forest. Was the house in view of the cameras? No, I don't think so. Then why are you telling me this? Find them. They'll show you. Show us what? Isabella, show us what? A secret message from Jeff Eastwood to his family can be found in the cave near the beginning of Stage 1-2. To access it, clear the area of mushrooms and then jump out of a map here. Move to the middle of a secret tunnel and jump upwards to break the game. A bunch of glitching assets can be found to the far right, while Jeff's message unlocks if we move to the far left. It reads as follows. Dear Susan and my daughter Summer, As you know, after my brother's death, we took in his daughter Isabella as our own. I know she may seem quiet and reserved, but you should try and open up to her. I know she may seem a little odd, but I think Isabella and Summer could become great sisters. Try talking to her a bit more, okay? She's been through a lot. She could use a little bit of support from you two. Love, Jeff. On stage 1-2, secret number 4 is found by dropping through both of these collapsing ledges and plummeting into the pit below. An image of Jeffrey Eastwood appears on the screen with his date of death, August 22nd, 1986. We then see a new character, it looks like a sunflower, and seemingly represents Jeffrey Eastwood. Without doubt, the most unsettling secret to be found is at the end of Stage 1-2. Usually when completing this stage, we are taken to the boss battle. However, if we collect every single half moon along the way, and reach the end of Stage 2 without losing a life, then we are transported to Jeff's family home. Isabella, who is now a part of Jeff's family, awakens one night to discover her uncle butchered in the living room. Uncle Jeff? Oh my god. Why does this keep happening? Why does everyone I care about die? This is all my fault. The final secret is found at the end of both Secrets 1 
2 and 4. We find ourselves in the game code, assets from Rabbit Knight glitching around us. This is where the entity resides, once again taking on the form of Peter the Pumpkin. In order to receive the game's true ending, we must escape Peter. After doing so, the following cutscene plays out. So very naive. You could not save her. Her own father, your brother, could not prevent this. What made you think you could? She is mine to control. Jeff, all you have done is drag yourself into a hell you cannot escape from. Jeff then appears as a new character in Andy's Apple Farm. Now we've looked through each of the secrets found throughout Rabbit Knight, let's break down the story and meaning behind it. Upon booting into the game, you may notice the year of its creation. It was developed by Eastwood Games in the year 1986. This is interesting for two reasons. Firstly, it tells us that Eastwood Games was not simply comprised of Thomas Eastwood, but also seemingly run by his brother Jeff Eastwood, a new key character found in Rabbit Knight and soon to be part of Andy's Apple Farm Chapter 2. The second reason this information should be of interest is because we know the date of Thomas Eastwood's own death, the moment he was consumed by the entity and rebuilt as Andy inside the Andy's Apple Farm game. That date was March 17th, 1983. So Rabbit's Knight could not have been made by Thomas himself and was instead made by his brother Jeff, roughly three years after Thomas passed away. This gives us a good timeline to work with, with certain events depicted in Rabbit Knight taking place in the year 1986. It also reveals how the entity may have first contacted Jeff, when he himself began work on a new game called Rabbit Knight. Now let's move on to the intro for the game. This short cutscene is cryptic in its execution, but tells us some key information that helps explain who the game's protagonist, Rory the Rabbit, actually is. Once again, the Rabbit Knight symbolises the character Jeff Eastwood. We'll look into why later on in the video, but keep in mind this symbolism for now. Most of the secrets in the game are self-explanatory, and we've gone over their basic meaning already. They tell the story of how, following the house fire and her father's murderous rampage under the entity's control, Isabella was questioned by the police before being cleared of any crimes and then taken into the care of her uncle, Jeffrey Eastwood. Here she became part of his family until Jeff's untimely demise on August 22nd, 1986. The fates of Jeff's wife and daughter are unclear. But what about the ending and how this story relates to the upcoming second chapter of Andy's Apple Farm? Well here is where we must break into theory territory and speculate on some possible outcomes. If we play to the end of Rabbit Knight, Rory comes face to face with an enemy rabbit character who throws half moon shaped objects at him. To me this suggests that this boss encounter represents Isabella. She is darker in colour as she is under the entity's hold, but fighting the entity one on one doesn't work. This is presented by the ending we receive if emerging victorious from this encounter. An error occurs and we are booted back to the title screen. To defeat the entity, Jeff needed to seek it out in less obvious ways. In fact, he may have even designed the game Rabbit Knight to try and trap the entity and move it away from Andy's apple farm. Peter the Pumpkin, an in-game representation of the entity, exists in the coding of this game, off the beaten path among the assets and game files. Upon trapping him in this game, Jeff tried to delete the entity but was killed in the process. This is shown in the Isabella ending where she finds her uncle butchered in the living room by the entity. This incident is paralleled in the game upon beating the Peter Pumpkin chase sequence, where we witness Jeff trying to save Isabella from the same fate her other family members befell, but is cut down in the process and then inserted into Andy's apple farm as this sunflower character. The entity has been with Isabella every step of the way, from the drowning of her brother Lewis to the moment she witnessed her father Thomas butcher his close friend Arthur. It seems plausible the entity may have used Isabella to burn the family home down too, 
although we don't have enough conclusive evidence to jump to this conclusion quite yet. Isabella has always been the last remaining survivor, and the human vessel the entity is most interested in. This new information also makes me rethink my prior interpretation of one of Andy's Apple Farm's central characters, and who they relate to in real life. See, unlike many of the other characters, we never received concrete proof that Melody represents Isabella, nor have we gotten firm evidence that Isabella ever died. In fact, with the story told in the Christmas special and Rabbit Night, it seems she is very much alive, which suggests Melody may represent another human character altogether. My best guess with the information on hand is that Melody could either represent Jeff's daughter Summer, or his wife Susan. Jeff wrote in his secret message that he hoped Susan and Summer could form a close bond with Isabella after she lost her own family. It seems this bond formed between them and allowed the entity watching over Isabella to claim both Susan and Summer's lives, then trapping them inside the Andy's Apple Farm game. One of these two is Melody, and the other may well be another new character, Bailey the Bee, who we first glimpsed in the Christmas special and is to play a key part in Chapter 2. Oh hey there folks, I'm Bailey the Bee. Welcome to Funfair. But to quickly play devil's advocate and explore other avenues, there are also several hints to suggest Melody is in fact Isabella. The fact her face is shaped like a half moon, and to unlock Isabella flashbacks, we are required to collect half moons. The fact that the boss enemy symbolising a possessed Isabella also uses moon-based projectiles as her attack pattern. It just seems odd that she would appear in the game as a character while still being alive in the real world. We can now also explain the intro sequence. By 1986, Jeff had worked out the entity was responsible for the death of his brother Thomas and sister-in-law Cameron. He was the last remaining Eastwood able to stop the monster with his programming skills, trapping it in a new game called Rabbit Night. Desperate to free Isabella from the demon's hold, Jeff Eastwood attempted to delete the entity from the game files and track down its presence in the real world. Unfortunately, he failed and befell a similar, gruesome fate to his brother. Leaving Isabella alone with the entity once more, while also trapping his soul within the game his brother created. Now both Eastwood brothers will reunite in digital form. Following his death, it seems Jeff's family, Summer and Susan, fell victim to the entity themselves. There was now no one to protect them from its influence, especially if Jeff had kept its very existence a secret in order to protect Isabella. We'll just have to wait and see if this theory proves true, but one thing's for sure, Rabbit Knight has just made Chapter 2 far more intriguing lore-wise. And with that, we come to the end of this video and a look at the secret story of Rabbit Knight. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.